How do artists get over imposter syndrome? So I'm not sure if they ever do or even if they even should, right? Uh, certainly, you know, if you're an aspiring musician, you might say, well, I'll never be as great as the Beatles, so why should I even try? And that might be true. You probably will never be as great as the Beatles, but that doesn't mean you don't have something great that you can offer. And if you're a screenwriter, you may think, yeah, but, you know, my script isn't, isn't great. Right, it's not supposed to be. You know, when you start off, it's not supposed to be. Your goal shouldn't be to write a great script. Your goal should be to write a script that's better than the last script that you wrote. And that's why I think it's so important to keep on writing. Uh, when I first broke into the business, I was a staff writer and just shoot me. And I remember, so I was good enough to get hired at the lowest level. And I remember sitting at the table with the other very experienced, very talented writers. And I'd pitch an idea and it would be met with polite silence. And then they would pitch an idea and everyone would laugh and that'd be great, including me. I was like, their idea is way better than mine. And I remember thinking, I don't even deserve to sit at the table, at the same table at these people, with these people. And at lunch, I would ask them for their help and their advice. And, you know, if you go into that with the, with the honesty, I'm not even being humble. I'm just being honest. You know, like, hey, how can I get better? Then they want to help you. And if you want to learn, that's, you know, but if you go into this attitude with, with the attitude of like, I'm already an expert everyone's going to hate you and you're probably not. And I've seen a lot of young writers get fired that way or their contracts don't get picked up because they start arguing with people who they don't realize how little they don't know. They don't really, they don't know what they don't know. You understand? Uh, so I, I think you always got to go into with the eyes of a student always, even, um, even here, like in the beginning, I did, I've been posting for about a year and a half and my friend Phil talked me into it. I was like, dude, I, I, I can't, I don't want people thinking that I think, I'm the king of Hollywood, that I'm some, you know, that I'm all that, because I'm not, you know? And he was like, but you know, you've been doing this for 26 years, you, you know what you're talking about. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not Aaron Sorkin, I'm not Shonda Rhimes, I'm not Chuck Lorre, I don't have that kind of success. He's like, yeah, but you've been doing for, you have plenty of success that you can offer advice and they're not posting every day and you are. I'm like, all right, well, I guess I can help in that sense, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not deluding myself. And when I'll, I'll watch like Phoebe Waller-Bridge. I thought uh, she had a couple of, or more than a couple of monologues in, in Fleabag, which, which were absolutely stunningly perfectly written. It was amazing. And I'm like, wow, you know, how did she do that? Or I'll read David Sedaris. I love his writing. I always have a pen nearby and I underline a line. It's like, that is like a magic trick. How did he do that? You know? So you, I think you always feel like, I'm not quite good enough. Can I get better? You know, and, and then slowly, hopefully, you get somewhere near good. <laughs> All right? Uh, so don't let that intimidate you. Don't let uh, great be the enemy of good or something like that. For more on what it's like to be a TV writer, keep following me at Michael Jammon Writer.